What is going on? How's everybody doing? Everybody's feeling good? You know, I was thinking about starting this whole podcast thing. Basically, what it is, is, well, if I need to explain to you what a podcast is, then we have another problem in itself. But I, I know this has nothing to do with the review. I just, I want to get a feeler out there, see what people are, you know, okay. Uh, not so much on YouTube, though, like a radio show type deal. Like, I have to get a microphone and a a booth and people. I honestly think people would listen to that. I don't know if it quite has the same thing as what a YouTube live would do. All right, whatever, doesn't really matter. So that's the intro for this video. What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here since I'm be doing a review on a device that I picked up. Nope, I'd be lying if I told you that. What? What's going on? How's everybody doing? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm going to be doing a review on a device that I was sent for the purposes of the review. It's been a minute since I've said that. And uh, let me tell you this. We have drippers, we have tanks, we have devices, we have mods, batteries. I guess you have chargers. Never really did a review on a charger. But you have these things that are just consistently repetitiveness on and on and on and on and on again. And the problem that I've ran into recently is a lot of the kits that you buy are box mods and essentially a sub ohm tank. So you can't really separate the two. I mean, you could, it would be a pain in the ass, but you might as well include it. So that just ruled out the sub ohm tank reviews, which I kind of miss. But now it got to a point where it's just drippers, tanks, and starter kits. Like, that's all there is. Occasionally, I'll sprinkle in a mech mod here or there. But even pod-based systems, no company send me because they know how I'm going to be. But this company did. And this company, you got to give them a high five, man. Any company that's willing to send me something, knowing this guy may hate this shit and we may get very upset after watching his review still continue to send it to me. So what we're going to be going over today is the Veek Arrow Kit, which basically reminds me of a skinnier version of the Nord. And I haven't done a review for that, but I do have it. And that is just like the Breeze. Well, a lot of pod-based systems are very, very similar. Closed-based systems are the type that have the juice already in it, and you have to use the liquid that comes with it. Now, majority of the time, some of those are refillable. Although, most of the times they are not, so you're stuck with using whatever it is that they have. So for anybody that really hasn't paid attention or listened to any of the news basically all over the internet in regards to Juul, they've essentially just stopped selling all their other flavors. They still do the tobacco, mint, menthol, but even getting those is a little bit difficult. So what people have been doing is going to other alternatives, usually the Sur and Drop, uh, the Breeze is pretty popular, the Sprite, lots of different pod-based systems. So what sets another company further apart than the next one? Because if you're just creating a pod that's refillable, it's fantastic, but so is every other company. This kind of pumps me up because it gives me something a little bit different to talk about. I kind of wish I did other videos on this channel, but then people get ass hurt because it's not about vape stuff. You're a vape channel, bro. My name's not Jay Vapes. Like, that's not what it is. Let's flip it. Yo, my eyebrows on Veek, yo. What? Man, your mustache is on Veek. Arrow kit on all sides of the box. It says Veek. And on the flip side of it, a little bit of information for you. And then some of the information down here on the bottom of what is included. 360 mAh. I feel like it could have been a little bit larger than that. Maybe like a 500 or a 600. But it's very rare to see a lot of pod-based systems come with more than that of mAh. Abraz on Veek, yo. Inside the box, you're going to get a multilingual manual. Really not a whole lot to read here. It's very, very self-explanatory the way that this functions. It's all kind of automatic. A little QC pass here. The pod, which surprisingly has a little bit of weight to it. Inside the accessory bag that comes with this is going to be another box, which is going to be for the micro USB. There's also going to be an extra refillable pod and essentially some extra fill port plastics. Pods that are in this already have the coils pre-built, so you don't have to worry about swapping out the coil. Pod is, in fact, a very proprietary size. To fill it up, there's this little piece of silicone you're just going to pull out 
and then fill it up right there on that side. Once you fill this up, let this sit for about three to five minutes, just so the juice does get into the cotton and get underneath where the coil is. It's your cotton here, your cotton, and your coil directly in the center. Keep in mind when you are using refillable pods, it's not a good idea to use really, really thick VG just because the coil is that small and the cotton is very, very tightly packed in there. So you want something that is max of 70, 30. 50, 50 would be the most ideal. This is the blue rendition. Would have much preferred the stainless steel or the black. You see there are no ding bents, bear spurs, or cowboy boots anywhere on it. Don't know why there would be. And then arrow, and then you have this kind of fake leather type deal on the sides of it. Micro USB here to charge it. And then on the bottom is this lovely light. There is no buttons on this, so there is no way to actually turn off that light. It is what it is. The pods that are in this by default are magnetic, as is the extra one. On the bottom of the stock pod is going to be a little label that you're going to remove to make sure that you could use this. Try not to fill this up and put this in and use it. It's going to do absolutely nothing. Contacts are directly in the center, and then your magnets are located on the side of each individual pod and the base itself. Once again, that is the Veek Arrow Kit. Let's bring it on the top. Back on top of the Veek little arrow jammy. Look at this little birth control tester jammy. That's not right, it's a pregnancy test. All right, all right, so here we are, back on top of the Veek Aero Kit, and that's been sitting for about three minutes. Let me show you some vapor production, even though it doesn't really matter in any kind of device like this. Something's that. I don't know what it is, but a lot of these pod-based systems that you put your own juice in, you don't really get a lot of flavor. You get the nicotine and you get the vapor production, but for whatever reason, it's like it's lost because of how much cotton they're using or the coil material that they're using for the metal. I think I said that wrong. The metal that they're using for the coil. But listen, you probably didn't catch it till after I said it anyway. Extremely compact little device. Now, as with all pod-based systems, I don't really give it much of a rating because there's really nothing to rate. I mean, you have the battery capacity, the pods, and that's about it. I will tell you this, it would have been really, really, really friggin' cool if there was some type of setting to where you can remove the light. A lot of devices that are obviously e-cig or pod-based type systems have a light at the end of it, and they're designed for stealth vaping. If you're out and about and you're walking down the highway and you vape on this, someone is either gonna think that there's a small moped headed their way, or someone's throwing you a light bulb or like an LED lit up. It's not super light either, like it's bright let me show you if i could turn the lights off outside like in the world i would show you yeah that's a pretty good hit a little cheat or trick that i like to do is put my fingers over where the airports are to kind of force feed the juice into it you can't really do that when it's all the way open because air is already coming in and it's hitting the coil so if you do it my way where you put your fingers over where the airports are and suck in that's going to force juice to get into that coil right away the only problem with this is i have no idea where the hell the air flow is coming from it's not on the side so if I go like this, and it's clearly, I am holding it by the two ports that are located on the inside of this, guess what? It does nothing. Really not a whole lot of places to put it. You have the sides and the bottom. Found it. Final port is actually located right on the bottom there. This is kind of a test that I like to do is see what happens when you blow into it. Because a lot of these that are airflow activated, meaning that you hit it and it starts to hit, if you blow into it, it doesn't stop. Let's just see. Wow. Now that is impressive. It's tiny. It's there. It works. It does something. Really, the only thing that I would change specifically with this device is making it stainless steel instead of blue, and then changing that leather to like a carbon fiber G10 type look. And then again, I mean, a lot of these times you're not going to be using a device like this for six, seven months. Usually use them three, four months, and then they stop holding a charge or the USB stops working. It's a very portable and disposable type deal. Now, keep in mind, guys, listen. When you're done using any of your devices, don't just throw them on the friggin' ground, man. Seriously, don't. Don't. I'm not trying to preach, do proper recycling. Just don't throw this on the ground. There's a battery in it. 
Do you take double A's and just throw them when you're done with your VCR remote? And who in the hell still has a VCR? There was something that I did a review on that was like $180. I think it was the Lawn and that, oh my God. Listen, the pods that came with it were like little disposable tanks. Okay. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm just gonna put a link up there in the corner. It was literally like $150 or $180 for a pod-based system. And then they went ahead and made stuff like this. They made cheaper renditions. And the problem you have with a lot of pods, this may fall in that same category, unless, of course, a bigger company is who is manufacturing this. Where are you going to get the pods? Someone came in the other day asking about a pod for this. Now, it's very apparent that she got it from somebody that did a giveaway. I'm not going to say any names because it doesn't really matter. You're not going to be able to find it just because it's not out yet. And if it is out, finding them online, you're probably going to have to buy them from a Chinese website. I wish, this is kind of like a business opportunity for you out there. I wish there was a company that only dealt with pod-based systems and carried all of them. Another good thing with an open base pod system like this, if it is auto firing and you can't get it to shut off, just take the top off and it's done you're now removing the whole completion of the circuitry. If you found one of these on a website somewhere, you're looking at picking one up, it's not a bad pickup. It's super cheap for what it is. Then again, it may be cheaper when it comes out. It may be a little bit more expensive, but all in all, it's not a bad device. And I've kept it real. Have you? Jeez.